Welcome to McDonald's Coach's Bench. Each and every week on Mix 1041, Terry Evans along with Coach Marty Wheeler each and every week. And we want to thank the CHS Live staff for producing this program, making it sound good, look good. Thanks to Dale Halfacre and all of his people here at CHS Live. Coach Marty Wheeler, a big shutout last week by your defense. Uh, that's huge. I don't know the last time Walker Valley's been shut out. Been years and years. Plus, great offense, great special teams, another all-around game. Absolutely was. R really excited we were as a staff um, uh, with the way that our players performed uh, uh, against Walker Valley. I mean, I thought we were really solid in, in, in all three phases of the game. Our kick coverage, I thought, was was uh, as good as it's been all year. Uh, you know, offensively, we were able to, to uh, we were very balanced. You know what I mean? Anytime we want to be, uh, that's what we want to be, is balanced offensively. And, uh, you know, that starts up front with our offensive line, who I thought played um, maybe their best game of the year. Um, of course, Tito, it allowed Tito to have a big night. And, uh, and not only did Tito have a big night, but by them protecting, uh, you know, Drew it get, it gave him an opportunity to have a uh, probably his best night of the year so far. And, you know, we have receivers all over the place uh, that that uh, if, if we have time to get them the football, they're, uh, they're going to make big plays, Destin Thomas. And, um, you know, you got Micah Jordan, but uh, you got uh, Brian Beard was back this Brad. week. It was great to see him back. Uh, Cam Lockerbie had a catch, uh, which I know uh, that's that's big for him because that might be, that may be his first catch. Uh, ever I don't know <laughs> and then of course I uh, have really seen a lot of growth and improvement from Rodney Broadnax uh, uh, from an offensive standpoint and, and uh, I mean I'm gonna tell you that's uh, it's a big deal you know Jake Jenny's solid as always when he gets in there so offensively I thought it was a, a total team effort as well as it was defensively you know uh, we had uh, a lot of the same guys that played well but I thought we played well um, you know, as a unit, uh, Walker Valley has, uh, they have the type of offense that can score, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, very quickly. And uh, they're, they're, a, they're a team that, that can do both as well. And they want to be balanced. And I thought we did a really nice job of, of getting ourselves in a situation to maybe to, uh, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, make them one dimensional. Absolutely, and uh, Coach, uh, three uh, picks for, for the defense, which was tremendous. In fact, from my viewpoint in the press box, I might have missed it, but to me, they get the opening kickoff. They're marching downfield, primarily running, which they're uh, mostly a passing team on big plays. But anyway, they march down the field. And then Dustin Thomas intercepts the pass, uh, like at the 10, somewhere like that. And from my vantage point, the rest of the game, momentum was all on the Cleveland sideline. That kind of, to me, took the life out of them. But you guys just kept on keeping on playing well. I mean, it was a big play there. Um, they did have some momentum in the first drive. Um, you know, we, we for some reason, we, we they caught us a couple times where we didn't get quite lined up. Uh, the way we wanted to up front, and uh, it, it was it, it left a couple of holes, you know, in our defense from a, you know, for them to able to find those running the football. But but uh, we were we were able to get that uh, that fixed, and then we got them into a situation where they had, they felt like they needed to throw the football, and Destin made a great play there, gave us the ball back, and uh, and you know our offense did a uh, a really good job of driving the ball down the field and getting points. You know, I felt like. Um, the first half was uh, was really good in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, I did. You know, as as a coach, uh, I'm, I'm you know I'm always finding things I thought we could be better at. But I thought we we probably left uh, you know we at least one score out there yeah. uh, in the first half. And you know, uh, I've got to realize at times uh, that that they are you know they are teenagers. I I, I realize it when they don't do it right. <laughs> uh, I need to realize that you know they're not going to be perfect, and we are. You know that's part of the game, but I thought defensively we continued to play the entire half, and um, you know, I mean we we were just uh, we were in control of the football game going into halftime. I understand totally. Uh, through the first six games, Cleveland five and one on the year, and Coach Wheeler, two great surprises for me. Great because of the. Uh, the way they've played this year, not that I, they couldn't, but it's just been to me a real good uh, surprise. Your defense and your offensive line, to me, they have uh, they have made such a world of difference. They have they have definitely continued to improve, uh, not just uh, you know from.
uh, throughout this year, but from a year ago, uh, you know, a lot of those guys back on the offensive line. We had to deal with the injury, of course, from Nicodemus mm -hmm. going down. Uh, our guys have done the guys that have had to step up in that in that role have done a really nice job. Uh, defensive, uh, our defensive line probably has been um, one of the biggest improvements uh, overall in our program. Uh, you know, as far as um, you know, it, making making teams earn uh, what they get running the football. You know, I've said that all along since I've been here. Passing, throwing the football, we 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 haven't done that bad a job of defending the pass since I got here. But we really we've done a real poor job of of defending the run, and now. Uh, I see us improving each and every week, you know, uh, trying to defend the run. So, uh, and again, another surprise uh, I, I would say too would be uh, it would, it's been a surprise up until the last few weeks, and now it's becoming an expectation is is uh, is Bennett Smith, our coach, oh, yes. which has done a, a great job. We had a um, we had a great opportunity there, you know, there uh, uh, in the second half uh, to get points, you know, uh, and. and and I went for it a lot uh, in those situations, but I felt like uh, I had a lot of confidence in Bennett, and I felt like it was a, a great opportunity to see uh, to see him get out there and and, um, and let the work that he's put in pay off. And, and of course, he executed just like I expected and that he would. So he's been a, a really nice uh, addition to our football program. And uh, you know, also I'll tell you that, that we got guys. Uh, you know, you don't always see it. Uh, if you're not looking for it, but I mean, special t from a special team standpoint, our kick coverage, you know, Glover Yon had a, had a, had a nice night, uh, uh, but not only him, but I mean, Isaiah Davis and, and uh, Lucas and Borski, who are two freshmen, right. uh, you know, you see their names being, and hear their names being called out a lot on kickoff coverage, and, that, and that's, uh, you know, that's just a credit to those guys. I mean, they, they take it seriously, and they take pride in it, and, and that's why they're out there, and uh, really pleased with what they've been able to do for us from a, from a coverage standpoint. Cleveland, 5-1 and one on the year, ranked number 10 in this week's AP poll. We'll take our first break on Coach's Bench, brought to you by the Smith Family Area McDonald's Restaurants. We'll be back in just a moment. Coach Wheeler, uh, tonight going up to Maryville, everybody that knows anything or little about high school football knows Maryville's story for the last 20, 30 years. Um, they're uh, ranked second in the state, uh, rightfully so, and you faced them the last couple of years, and, and you know everybody knows the story with uh, Maryville's ribs. Um, you're good friends with Gary Rankin, head coach at Alcoa, and in my opinion, one of the best football coaches in high school to ever step on the field in, in Tennessee high school football. Have you communicated with him because each year, he gives Maryville all and then more than what they want. Well, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, he and I, we talk, uh, we, 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 we stay in touch with each other, uh, not just during football season, but um, he, he usually calls me because when I call him, he won't call me back. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, and he'll hang up on you before you can say bye, and, 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 that, and that bothers me. I mean, I, I give, uh, he, but it don't, I guess it doesn't matter when, you, when you've done what he's done, you, you know. But I'm kidding, he's a great, he, not only, let me tell you the thing I'd say about him, not only is he a great coach, he's a great person. Like, he, he's just, he's as humble a man as, as you can imagine being when you've had the success he's had. And, uh, you know, if you just listen when he's talking, you, you know, he always says something that I think is beneficial for, for myself and any other coach that, that has the opportunity to talk to him. Uh, he and I have talked, uh, in the past about it, and uh, and the big thing is, is that you know the the formula it takes to play them well and have and give yourself opportunity to beat them is not is not a, is not going to change. And so, you know, for us as a team, what we got to do is is we've got to play with a chip on our shoulder. You know, we, the number one, you know, to, to, when you play them, they're so well coached. Uh, they don't make mistakes. They're very physical. They're they're like clones of of the, the, them and Alcoa are very similar in the style of football they play. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and having experience with those, going against those guys as well, you got to be physical. You have to make your mind up that you're going to match, try to match them from a physical standpoint. If you don't, if you don't want to, if you don't want any part of that, it's not going to go well for you. Yeah. And so we've got to do a really good job of, you know, understanding that we're, that's what type of football game it's going to be. Uh, and then, as I told our guys this week, you know, you can't just play hard, you can't just play good. 
you got to play hard and good, and then you got to play smart. Uh, those the, the, those guys are as good as anybody you're going to see. It. When you make mistakes, they punish you right. and, and uh, make you pay for them. And so we've got to limit our mistakes. Are we going to make some? Of course we are, but we've got to um, we've got to limit those mistakes. We've got to when we get them in third down situations. The thing I've noticed about them is uh, both of them, but but Marable, they're really good on third down. Um, it's they, they their execution on third down from an offensive standpoint is, I mean it's impressive, you know, and and, and from a defense standpoint, when we're on offense, we can't make mistakes to put us behind the chains, or um, not execute that puts us in a situation where, you know, that's not ideal for us uh, from a from an offensive and play calling standpoint. So it's, um, I mean, it's not that it's not that the 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 game plan or the the way you play with them and, and, and give yourself an opportunity to beat them is, is, is complicated or difficult to figure out, but it's very difficult to execute it. And so uh, it's going to take a great challenge by our guys, but I mean, we've had a good week of practice. Uh, I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's an opportunity that, you know, not everybody gets. It's a chance to play against some of the best uh, competition in the state of Tennessee. And, and well, we want, we're expecting our guys to perform like we're capable of performing. Um, and, that's, and that's just that's it in a nutshell. Okay. We'll take our final break on Coach's Bench, brought to you each week by the Smith Family Area McDonald's Restaurants in Southeast Tennessee. Thanks to Coach Marty Wheeler. He's always very cooperative with us. We'll come back and wrap this program up in just a moment. Coach Wheeler, five and one on the year. You and I talk each week about the improvement uh, the Blue Raiders have made uh, uh, during the during this season, and also so much improvement. Uh, you you had them in the weight room. You had a total off-season program with them, and uh, I think the improvement is evident in every phase of the game. Uh, and you know. The general fan probably thinks of Cleveland football at 7, 7.30 on Friday night. Um, I kind of got uh, an eye opener last week uh, from you, and you're always giving me new insight, but last week uh, I texted you about I wanted to do a player interview Thursday afternoon, and you text back, we practice at 6 a.m. on Thursdays. Coach, you got to be dedicated to be out there at 6 a.m. And so that's just an example of what these kids have to do to perform for you. I mean, it's a, it's a testament to those guys. I mean, I, I know when we first um, decided to go to that schedule, uh, I was uh, obviously I was hesitant to do it because it's not what I'm, I'm accustomed to. Uh, and so um, my biggest concern would, would of course, be attendance. Mm -hmm. But you know, I can't say enough about our guys. Not only are they there, but we've had some of the best, um, for the format we do on Thursdays, we've had some of the best practices that, that, um, that you can, we can have uh, when we went to the morning deal. It's the, th the reason why we go on Thursday mornings, and I, and I think this is really good and it works for everybody, is, is so, you know, as I've said before, I mean, Cleveland, our, our, our players should have the cleanest teeth and the, and the and the healthiest uh, bill of the best bill of health they can get because uh, when I got here, I mean, you got somebody wanting, they going to need to miss practice for a dentist appointment mm -hmm. or a doctor's appointment, or they're behind <laughs> in their classes, so they need to t go to tutoring. Yeah, you know, or they got to make up a test or it's something. So the biggest sale for me on it was so so Thursday when we go on Thursday morning, um, it you know it's not the easiest thing for me to get up at 4.45 at my age now. Uh, I know I don't look very old. Now you you but still I'm look 18. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I'm older than I look. So, um, but anyway, they, the, the, the thing about it is, it, it's, uh, but once you get here and get rolling, uh, it's, it's a pretty good feeling about this time, about noon, you know, to know, hey, look, um, you know, you got an afternoon to get some things taken care of. I learned this a long time ago. It doesn't matter what time you put the work in as long as you put the work in. Mm -hmm. And so our guys now have opportunity, if they need a dentist appointment, a doctor's appointment, if they're behind in a class, if they need to make up a test, that's what Thursday afternoons are for. And they don't have to miss practice to do it. And so um, the biggest thing they like about it, though, is that they, they feel like they get a Thursday afternoon where they can be just a normal student. Yeah. Our coaches, I think, would, I don't know if I can get them to come back if, if we went, went away from it. So. 
Uh, it's but it's worked out really good. I think. I mean, the worst Thursday practice we've had this year. What was the one day that we were out of school oh. uh, for for staff shortage, and, and uh, that was a bad one. It was a bad day because I mean it changed up the routine. Those guys uh, l enjoy it. They perform really well doing it, and, and therefore, as long as it, it, as they continue to do that, uh, we're going to continue to do it. But I mean, I think it's one of the best things that uh, that's where I listen to you know our staff. Uh, you know, my job is not just to do all you know all the come up with all try to come up with all the ideas. My job as a head coach is to listen to the guys that that we have on our staff. I mean, why would I have a staff? You know, mm -hmm. and so they. They convinced me that it would be best for us, and I got to give them credit. They were, they were, I think they were 100% right. So that's been big for us. It does take. I know that now. I know that the biggest thing is uh, I feel feel for are the, are the parents that their kids aren't old enough to drive. I know that's probably not the most ideal thing, you know. But um, it works. It's worked for us, and 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 it, it gives those guys uh, an opportunity. They have no reason to to, to try to explain uh, or try to to tell us they're behind. From making up tests or, yeah. or tutoring or, or, or any other thing that that is they need to do, so it's worked out really well for us. You know, I've always been told that great leaders listen to other people and listen to the people who report to them, and, and that's not just in football, but that's everything. And, and so, a leader does that, and it takes a lot of dedication to be a Cleveland High Blue Raider, and. These guys put in the effort, the time, everything that's required. Assistant coaches spend a world of time. Coach Wheeler, it's a 365-day-a-year job for him. And it shows on Friday night. Thank you so much for being with us on the Coach's Bench each and every week with Coach Marty Wheeler.